tonight, Record Store Day Black Friday drops with Jeremy Shatton from an earful blog, plus dad jokes and stupid memes. Here's your host, Dennis Ball. What is up, Ballers? And what's up, Jeremy Shatton from the Nearful Blog? Thanks for coming on to talk about Record Store Day Drops. You're very welcome, Dennis. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. We're talking about the stuff they're releasing on Black Friday. And right. um, they announced it a couple weeks ago, but we're going to talk about like the three that you want to pick up. And I'm going to talk about mm -hmm. my pickups that I want to get. And then I have, yep. for a finale, Mrs. Ball's pickup that she wants to get. She shared with us. So... That will be very cool. Who do we have in the Mrs. chat? Mrs. Ball has entered the chat. Yeah, Mrs. Ball has <laughs> entered the Lunchbag Larry, what up, dog? Yo, ya 420, what up? And Georgia Constitution Media is in the chat with the Hey Ballers. What's up, you guys? <laughs> All right, we have, I even made little slides for our ones. So let's go to our record store day. Oops, that's a spoiler. That's actually not a real... Hold on a second. That actually was like a kind of a bonus selection. Wait a minute here. All right. Here's the page. In the link, ballers, is the Black Friday website. So if you would like to, you can um, you can check that out. You know, like you can go click through and look through the entire list. I mean, there's there's something a lot. Like 100. Is that? I, didn't... I was just going to say. Sorry. There's something like 180 plus releases this year wow just on just on black friday mm -hmm. um yeah and there's some real there are actually some really cool ones there's some christmas stuff um there were some that i did not um i had a hard time deciding but it was good because a lot of the ones that you chose were ones i wanted to <laughs> so that that's all right so let's jump into it man with your first selection that you gave me which was sure Jimi Hendrix, yeah, Burning Desire. So this was one of those Dagger Records releases a few years ago, originally only on CD. And then they put it out on black vinyl for a Black Friday, I think in 2017, but it's not been released since then. And even this is not a very big run. Yeah, let's I see think. here. I have um, I've got my little info sheet here. And I have oh, it actually, here. Five thousand, five thousand, so two LPs. Yeah, it's the biggest release for this collection of it, experimental sessions with Billy Cox and Buddy Miles. It's and, all studio stuff. Oh, and is, I have not heard that. And they're they're like long. Like it is a like um the Easy Rider MLK Jam is twenty minutes. Um, yeah. So have you heard this record, this album? No, no. I think I may have heard bits and pieces of it yeah. over the years in different forms. I also have a lot of bootlegs. So that's like that that's an, not authorized. <laughs> right, right. And there are bad versions but, of this, but this is an official. Ver it looks beautiful. It's an official release. Yeah, yeah. And, and um, you know, look, the Hendrix estate is a complicated entity. Yeah, Janie Hendrix is a, a difficult woman, from what I've heard. But she really has done right by Jimmy's legacy. And the, yeah. all the Jimi Hendrix stuff I've gotten over the years has been beautifully pressed, beautifully designed, great liner notes, and, you know, just interesting. If you're a fan, you kind of want to have it. The uh, I really enjoyed the Paris 1967 release from last year's mm -hmm. Record Store Day drop uh, at Black yeah. Friday. Uh, we picked it up. And they also have a live concert coming out. It's for good. his 80th birthday that's never been released before that sounds fantastic yeah it was i mean it had moments when it was like it's it's interesting like the sound guy took a minute to dial in so the first song isn't as good as the last song is but mm -hmm. he pretty quickly gets a good mix going and yeah it's a real show it sounds good in fact we've listened to it a lot of times this year so i that's a good mm -hmm. one all right here let me give you mine Go my it. one is the Dead, Wembley Empire Pool, London, England, April 7th, 1972. It's a live album. It's like five records. Um, I won't put the entire list up here. It's a lot of the stuff from... <laughs> it's a lot of the stuff from Skulls and Roses era. You know, it's a lot of that classic stuff. China Cat, Sunflower. Um, 
There's a few Jerry Garcia ba- uh, stuff that would end up on Bob and Jerry's albums, first albums. Mm. Um, it's a great collection of stuff. And I mean, I haven't listened to the whole thing, but I also am like, if I don't know if you're like this, Jeremy, but like, I don't, I kind of like to not have heard everything that I get. Like, I want to go pick it well, up yeah, and that's... listen to it on the <laughs> that's, record. That's... Right? I don't need to preview yeah. it on Spotify. For me, that's kind of the point. Right. To, to tell you the truth, I'm not, I don't have dozens of record store day releases kind of for that reason. If I already have the record, if it's already on Spotify, I'm unlikely to get crazy about tracking it down for record store day. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And I, I don't always necessarily, but like this sort of thing, I, I, I like this era. Um, me and Mrs. Ball like to listen to the dead and hang out. It's five LPs, <laughs> Rhino, 7,500 of them. Um, mm-hmm. and I, So I'm going to check it out. I mean, if I don't get this one, I'll probably get another one of the records from this series. There's a bunch of them from these mm. 1972 shows. But is that all from one concert or, or um, one month of concert? I think it's from, let's see here. I thought there was it one says here, I'll concert. read, the, available for the first time on vinyl, the Grateful Dead opened their famous Europe 72 tour at the sold out cavernous Wembley Empire Pool in London, including performances of their best known songs, a healthy dose of music from the Skull and Roses album, and more than half a dozen songs from Jerry and Bob's respective 1972 solo albums. So, mm. I mean, it sounds, they make it sound like it was one show, Jeremy, but I bet it's probably a couple days that they, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, the, it was like the beginning of the tour, though, at least. So, it's five LPs. I mean, I guess if it was like a three-hour show, that could be five LPs. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, but it looks like a great one. All right, so let's move on to your next one, which I'm also gonna try and yeah. get, which is Thriller. This is Pablo. I mean, yeah. So ballers, if you don't know who this guy, explain really who Augustus Pablo. I, I hesitate to think. Well. I'm sorry, Jeremy. Go on, explain to the ballers who Augustus Pablo is. Who people who might not know who he is. Augustus Pablo is a dub reggae avatar. He is known for his incredible work playing the melodica, which a lot of people see as a child's instrument that teaches you how to play wind instruments. But he turned it into a totally different experience. He's a virtuoso on the melodica, and he worked with the best producers and the best bands. So. It's it's a Almost very it, Pablo it's iconic from now. The 70s can be good. Yeah, it's an iconic sound, and in fact, you've heard Ballers, King Tubby meets the Rockers Uptown, which is Augustus yeah. Pablo's. I mean, it's like a song as big as No Woman No Cry in dub. You know, it's huge. Yeah. So is is have I mean, you heard yeah, this some essential album? This is a repress I of an old know record, what this right? Sounds like the I mean, yeah, it's from so 75. So I'm assuming it's going to be good. <laughs> yeah. I if mean, it's from 1975. It says it's the 1975 album from Pablo, the reggae visionary who popularized, popularized the use of melodica in the genre founder of multiple labels. Yeah. He was a crucial part of the invigorating burgeoning dub reggae scene in the early days. It has a warm, mellow sound, it says, with a bre- it makes it for a breezy, hypnotic listen. It's probably right around from that era of King Tubby. Um, they say it's perfectly paired yeah. with a jazz cigarette, Jeremy. Um, oh, <laughs> it's reissued for the first time since the 70s on transparent red vinyl. 2,000 copies worldwide. Wow. I yeah. mean, that's not too many. Uh, that's no. I hope that I we mean, find. I hope that we can get it. I mean, that's. I'll buy it, and they'll show up online for sale after if you don't get it. You know. Oddly enough, it's not that crazy on Discogs. If you wanted to buy an original copy, it looks like you could get one for under fifty dollars. Okay, so that's, so that's not bad. maybe no. That's not true. About fifty dollars, but thriller pablo and red so it's the the it has it's the, the they're called the tracks are if you can read it ballers thriller pablo and red oh here actually i have a i have a slide of it man here we go oh yeah pablo style yeah, last of the gesturing striker pablo no gesta 
Fat Girl, Marcus <laughs> Garvey, Rocky Road, and Skibo Road. Um, what's with Thriller? Is that Michael Jackson? No relation. It it's... can't be because that was five years later or seven. Years oh, later. okay. Well, there you go. But it's so it's yeah. just sort of the same genesis, like a thriller movie. I love the cover. Yeah. And the name. Yeah, of the cover's the cool. It's it's on colored vinyl. It's a it's a reggae record that's hard to find. And by one of reggae's greatest. So. Perfect. All right, my next one yeah. is Ballers. Metaphysical Graffiti by the Dead Milkmen. Um, a record that I, I'm a big fan of the band. I have to admit, I don't have this record. Um, so I'm excited to have an opportunity to buy it on vinyl. Um, I know that I follow the Dead Milkmen on social media. I know that Rodney had pulled out this model of the building on their YouTube program one morning, on one Saturday morning. And said he was giving it to some dude to like fix it up, or he had gotten a new one, or there was something about it. It had come out of storage, and then I found out they'd re rephotographed it for this release. Um, and there's a bunch of you know there's a bunch of stuff in with this with this record. I mean, you can see there's a there's a seven inch with four songs that were not released with the regular record, um, uh -huh. and it's it's all Giving Groove, which is a you know charitable label. And they always they always give to a great cause for, with each record release. Um, I don't and, know anything about that band. To tell you the truth, dude. The Dead Milkmen. I know and, the name. Yeah, they had but. a they had a couple. I mean, their iconic "Big Lizard in My Backyard" album was like a kind of masterpiece of pop punk, which almost like launched the genre in a sense. Like it's very much, mm. uh, uh, it's you know like that sound, that's jangly surf rock sound. The petulant um catchy heartfelt vocals of d of uh, rodney anonymous and um, joe jack talcum and um mm -hmm. and they were just always funny and there was but like then there's emotion you know and they yeah. actually recently got back the rights to their first two records which they mm -hmm. didn't they had sold away or some something so now i think i was kind of hoping it was a uh full album cover of physical graffiti in a pop punk style no 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 but they do have such <laughs> song, such hits as if you love someone set them on fire methodist coloring book is another hit the big sleazy in praise of sha na na and little man in my head and anderson walkman buttholes and howl um and so, so yeah and so in any case <laughs> So in any case, I'm hoping that with their next with with um, the two records that they got the rights back to, Eat Your Paisley and Big Lizard in My Backyard, my hope ballers is that they do like a super deluxe, that they pull out some stuff mm -hmm. that they had from the past, and they you know they they give us an enhanced version, like a maybe a nicely remixed or remastered version of the record, along with a few you know some some live stuff some rehearsal stuff some alternate stuff maybe a book maybe some of the newsletters because i used to get those um i was a member of the fan dead milkman fan club i think there was some such thing like that and i used to get a photo print out of their myspace page yeah exactly <laughs> Um, so in any case that's my that's that was my second or we'll, we'll move on um mm -hmm to you oh that's not that's the your next one which is yeah nightclubbing nightclubbing i mean that caught my eye and you know that's kind of a little bit of my childhood on there the birth of punk rock in new york city i admit that i i only went to max's kansas city once and it was the last night it was open wow the beastie boys played there but i did get there and it was a legendary place and i'd love to learn more about it and see the visuals and hear the sounds because obviously i've read a lot about max's but this dvd documentary and cd soundtrack purports to have unheard unseen footage of things like iggy and the stooges billy idol Ruby and the Redneck, Sid Vicious, Alice Cooper, New York Dolls. Yeah, and there, there's a D, it's a DVD and a, and a CD. I was unfortunately yeah, they give not you the a soundtrack. Record. But um, yeah. but yeah, it looks it looks fascinating, and you know you never know your buddies, the Beastie Boys, could be on there too. 
They should be since they closed the place down. <laughs> you're right. It yeah, I would think show that show would be there. there. So maybe you're even on the that movie. They don't. Yeah. I also. Oh, and they they also say that the this exclusive version is going to have an additional 50 minutes of deleted scenes, which could be gold. Right. And you get the soundtrack CD, a poster, and there's only 1,500 of these worldwide. It looks so you know it's not all about the vinyl it's really about the content it is about the content with that one even though this is digital i'm still very interested in it yeah it is very it looks cool we're definitely i'm definitely going to check that one out all right here's my next one paris blues the doors which i think was sort of a bootleg for years and it's you know there's mm -hmm. some outtakes from a couple of records um, I, I, there's a whole article ballers on Rhino Records website. It's a Rhino release, and I put yeah. the link in the description. So if you want to read it, if you're interested in this record, I recommend checking that out. Um, one but, thing, yeah, go ahead. One thing I remember about that is that the cover, I believe, was drawn by Robbie Krieger, the guitarist. Good trivia. I did not. Yes. Either Krieger or, or Densmore. Now I'm, now I'm unsure. But I no, think you're it was right. Krieger. You're right. Um, yeah. There's some... and, but I do have to say that it does not have the classic Doors feel, which should be a band photo. Right. It does not. Pretty much all their albums have the band on the cover. And they were so gosh darn photogenic, especially that, that one named Jim, that I, I think that would have been cool to have. It would have been cool to have a photo, an but unseen image, you know, an unfamiliar image of them. And so here's the, on stage. so, you know, it has the Paris blues was record is like, an was, is an unreleased track. So like, that's going to be something new. It's all yeah. blues songs. Okay. And like, mm -hmm. I, I think I will never be untrue. And me and the devil blues are from, um, either soft machine or, LA wo LA woman uh soft parade yeah rough uh, soft parade yeah and, and they but they're not sure and then the next two so, or uh -huh. definitely from soft parade but they had no yeah. bass on them so um who recorded the bass for it um D Robert DeLeo from Stone Temple Pilots did the bass ah. for you don't you um you need meat don't go no further and I'm your doctor yeah those are the soft parade ones those oh. are those two. And then um, it's just interesting. And then, But then the ones that I love, actually, Side B, Little Red Rooster, Rock Me Baby, and Who Do You Love with Albert King are freaking phenomenal. I've so never heard those. That la that second side is, is f fire. And I actually, a friend of mine had that record um, when oh. I was a younger ball. And I, you know, it's, those are from... Um, Again, like look at the look at the article because there's a lot of details that I didn't put on the script. So those were bootlegs. Th those were no, they were yeah, they were bootlegs. They were from like an Ontario performance or something. The name of the record oh, okay. escapes me, but um, it was I thought for some reason it was Doors Alive, but it wasn't. Mm -hmm. It was not an official release. So this is kind mm -hmm. of a first f official release of those, and I'm yeah. really looking forward to what they sound like and how cool they are. Um, I would definitely listen to that. I wonder if they'll ever put out. Have you heard the "Woke Up This Morning and Found Myself Dead" bootleg with Jimi Hendrix, Johnny Winter, and Jim Morrison? I, you know, I don't know. I think I might have. Was that part of like a, a Timothy Leary set thing or something? No, it was just a crazy night in Greenwich Village. I know. I maybe I didn't hear that. That's crazy. It, yeah, it's it's very interesting. Hendrix is in rare form, and he seems to love playing with Johnny Winter because it was so rare that he played with anyone who was even close to his his talent, you know. And wow. and then Jim Morrison starts blustering, and he's completely drunk. But it sort of works. It's called "Woke Up This Morning and Found Myself Dead." It's yeah. it's a bootleg with Jim Morrison. Jimi Hendrix and and Edgar Winter. So Johnny uh, Winter. Johnny Winter. So so check it out. Uh Google that. All right. Yeah, the fine the final one, Mrs. Ball's selection for Record Store Day is Duran Duran Hammersmith 1982 concert. 
Um, mm. They did not give a ton of information, ballers. Hold on a second. Let me get up the, the thing about it. Um, they didn't give up a ton of information about it, but they say... Um, as in 1982, as Duran Mania was sweeping the globe, the band filmed and recorded one of their three London dates at Hammersmith Odeon. The this double this gold double vinyl edition features live performances of Rio, Hungry Like the Wolf, and Girls on Film, plus a fan favorite cover of Steve Harley and Cockney Rebels. Make me smile. Come up and see me. <laughs> I was like, wow, that sounds that interesting. <laughs> um, so. Um, Mrs. Ball was like, Mrs. Ball loves Jeremy live shows, loves going to live shows. And so therefore also likes recordings of live shows because it's a way that, you know, we can kind of experience that we've, you know, what it might have been like to be at that show live. Um, So this is one that we're going to check out and try and track down. Okay. Now, what do you know about Duran Duran as a live band? I've never heard a live performance by them. Um, I believe that they are pretty much a live band, at least from footage I've seen. I mean, who knows? Mm-hmm. I mean, at least then it's, I think maybe they were playing to a drum machine or something, but the synths and stuff seemed like they were live. Obviously the vocals mm-hmm. are live. Um, uh, but I mean, yeah, I don't know. You know I don't, I don't know what they, quality they I have. You know, I have no good. idea. I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, we're coming into it kind of blind, which is sort of one of the, one of the interesting things about it it's you know it's always you always have the potential to to pound sand when you buy a record like this they could be a terrible show but i figure also if it's if a duran duran concert's gonna be good hammersmith 82 is a pretty good contender probably yeah, no i think i think there's some good signs pointing to that for sure but um, I'll I'll let you know. In fact, maybe yeah. we'll do a follow up video where we talk about what we picked up and how what we thought about it or something. All right, man. Let's um let's go to Chuckle Balls. Ballers, you can park behind Chuckle Balls. I know it can be difficult to find parking in Ball City. Welcome in, everyone. I need to say hi to the chat, man. I've been talking so much about records that I didn't say hi to Cowboy Coder. What's up, brother? Lunchbag Larry is in the house and chatting with Georgia Constitution Media and Yoya420. And I, it's so much going on that I can't even... I can't even. I'm close to a 1,000 subs, Lunchbag Larry, I know. How close am I? I can't even go to it. Let me see if I can. Am I really Lock that close? Heck Am I really close to a thousand subs? Nine eighty-seven. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, so we're getting closer. So I have some jokes for y'all. Um, as always, Super Ball, let them in. They're with me. Super Ball is the bouncer, as you know, Jeremy. <laughs> um, everybody, get a beverage. I purchased a beverage for everyone. A round for everyone. It's in your fridge, and it's your favorite drink. Grab it. Come back here and sit down. I have jokes for you guys. Let me pull it up here. Hold on a second. Jeremy, where does a mermaid sleep? On the seabed. On the seabed, of course. I'm getting, that's a laugh. Boom. Oh, Lord. Yes. <laughs> All right. So tell me, ballers, in the chat if it's a laugh or a no laugh. And I will... Re- register as a ding or a no laugh. I gave it a laugh and Jeremy gave it a laugh. The first one. And um, here's one. This one goes out to um, Lunchbag Larry because it's a food joke. Lunchbag Larry, this guy knocked me to the ground and he poured soy sauce all over me. And then he started like kicking me in the ribs. And I was like, oh man, come on. Don't kick oh man when he's down. Don't Kiko, man. That's a no laugh from Jeremy. I'll laugh at my own soy sauce branded joke. My delivery was poor. I'll admit it. Okay, Bryson, what's up? I kick him in for that one. All right, this one goes out to Cowboy Coder. Our guest from last week, watch his episode and check out his album produced by MC Lars. You can find out about it. Cowboy Coder... You know, it's really hard for me to tell anyone what my wife does for a living. 
she sells seashells by the seashore. <laughs> it's literally hard for me to say it. All right, that's a laugh from both of us. Thank you, Cowboy Coder. Yeah, the shorts are hard for me to... I need to do more shorts. All right. This one goes out to Georgia Constitution Media. Georgia Constitution Media, um, have you ever... Since you're into the Constitution, you'll like this patriotic joke. <laughs> ever seen a photo of Mount Rushmore before it was carved? The Its natural beauty was unprecedented. <laughs> <laughs> That's a laugh from Jeremy. Oh, man. That's a good one. Okay, cool. Um, it's like the chat's not even watching the show. They're doing their own thing in there, which I appreciate. Well, I need to put the chat in the front of all of this. Here, hold on, chat. I don't know where your chat is. It's not in the thing, though. Here, hold on. All right, chat. I'll just have to read you on the side, my friends. <laughs> All right, here's, here's one for Bryson because he goes to conventions. It's our last ad joke of the set, and then we're going to the meme section, which is the most popular part of the show. <laughs> uh, Bryson, Comic-Con and Dragon-Con were going to merge into one event. Did you hear that? But they, they decided it would cause too much confusion. It would cause too much confusion if they, if they fused together those two cons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You like that All one? All right. You got to me. <laughs> okay, that was a good one. All right. Thank you. And now a message from our sponsor. Every day was just a nightmare. The news, the daily grind. Everything was a drag. I just didn't want to do a thing. Then my doctor told me about Subscriva. Not a medical claim for entertainment purposes only may cause anal leakage, feelings of overwhelming despair and existential dread, increased stupidity, diabetes, sudden death, halitosis, heart attacks, premature balding, itchy feet, severe headaches, forgetting how to talk, explosive diarrhea, hives, weak tendons, cavities, erectile dysfunction, hemorrhoids, arthritis, cotton mouth, earaches, greasy hair, and more. Visit our website for a full list of potential symptoms. Subscriva from Ball and Ball. Subscribe to life. And also this channel. <laughs> Do you like that one, Jeremy? I love that. Have one. you seen that one before? Yeah, I have. Mount. So we were actually almost to the top of Mount Monetize. I'm close to a thousand okay, subs. You have to change the sign. So ballers, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And when I get to a thousand, I'm going to do a video where I talk about how I do the show and show my human face. To oh the God. ballers. So I know it's going to be insane. Insanity. All right. So get your friends and your mom to sub. All right. I got some. I have a lot of good memes tonight. You guys. Um, there's a there's a swear in one of them. So if you have a small child, you might want to skip this channel. This seg segment. Um, but um, all right. Let's do it. Lunchbag Larry. You like that one? Hey, yes. I got some laughs, I think, from some people. They're all chatting in there, man. They didn't even react to the jokes, which I think is good. They're, like, being friendly. All right, ballers. Community going. You build a yeah, community. yeah, community. Cool or drool. If it's a good one, Jeremy, say cool. If not, it's, it's drool. You know the routine. Okay, here's the first mm -hmm. one. Worst album ever. <laughs> it's like a... It's like a grinder wheel for some tool. <laughs> that is cool, right? Yeah, I've actually seen that one before. Like that. that is pretty good. All right, ballers. All right, cowboy co coder. Have a good night, man. Peace out. All right, here's a good one. This is a good Friday one. It's Friday. I'm at work. <laughs> That got a laugh. I assume that's a that's cool for you. That's a cool for me. Did you like that one? Is that a cool? That was pretty cool. Yeah. Friday. I'm at work. Okay. I get yeah, it. Anything that makes a little fun of Robert Smith. Is good. I know. I love it. All right. Here's here's the next one. Don't touch the vinyl. You bleep. Because <laughs> look how he's taking it out. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that That's is not good vinyl hygiene. <laughs> no, it's not. 
<laughs> I thought that was cool. It was just funny and colorful, too. Very 70s. All right. Guys, in the chat, please tell me if cool or drool on these. Give me some feedback. I appreciate you guys. I'm sorry I'm, I'm not talking more to you, Lunchbag Larry and Yo-Ya. And um, Cowboy Coder and Bryson and George Constitution Media. All right. Here we go. I have more good ones, so stay tuned here. I don't want to cause any trouble. I just want to hear a good record. <laughs> I don't know who that is and what if that's from a famous movie or something, Jeremy, but I found it like like really appealing if it is from. It's a cool shot and I I think it's more of a glamour shot. I don't think it's from a movie. Right. Not even from a magazine spread. Right. Yeah, cuz it sounds like it does but doesn't it seem like it would be like she'd be like it would be like in a scene and it's like I don't want to cause any trouble. I just yeah. wanted to hear a good record. But you see what's going on in the background there with that that semicircular table and it's got the records on it. Yeah, like that's kind of like the old photographs I used to take, where I would set up these very involved film noir kind of things. So I I know where my eye is supposed to go, but my eye is definitely going in the back there, going, huh? Yeah. Why is that record not in a sleeve? Is what I'm thinking. Well, <laughs> but they did things differently back then. They were like, whatever. Yeah. All right. That was All right. Cool. cool as heck, though. Yes. What you doing with those big CDs? <laughs> 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 um, I say that's cool. Um, yeah. it, it's a, and uh, thank you. But it's funny. It's almost like an old fashioned meme because it it's from it's pre uh, vinyl resurgence. Right, right. You know, so it's like assuming yeah, that young people don't know what vinyl is, yeah. but they do now, for sure. You know, yeah. it's interesting. All right, here, this is a good one. It's hard to read, so I'll read it to you. Okay. The Ramones wanna steal from the rich and give to the poor, 5%, live, 10%, live my life, 10%, puke, 1%, be your boyfriend, 21%, sniff some glue, 5%, something to do, 5%, shock treatment, 5%, have some, have some chicks, 2%. Get some kicks, 2%. And the airwaves, 19%. And be sedated, <laughs> eight, 15%. And the misfits just want your skulls. <laughs> 100%. I just thought that was... I actually, like, I didn't even need the misfits part. I It made me yeah. want to redo the Ramones one more clearly. Yeah, um, yeah. Because it would make a fantastic shirt, wouldn't it? Oh, that is a good idea. Yeah, Ramones wanna, and then you could actually probably yeah. like fine tune what the what the things were yeah. to make them lyrically, make them accurate, <laughs> you know, totally accurate, and ma and it would be cool. Um, I th I gave that one a cool just because I liked the idea. I think it's very cool. And cool, fun. and it's actually. <laughs> It's actually even cooler because it looks like it was printed out on a piece of paper and then hung on the wall of a punk club and taking a picture of it, you know? <laughs> All right, hold on a second. This is a funny one. You guys are going to like this. Deadheads be like, meet your, beat my kids. Jerry, Bobby, Althea, Stella, Donna, drum slash bass, and the other one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so good. Those are song titles at the end. It becomes song titles. Um, yeah, pretty funny though. I like that one. I thought that was that cool. Cool, because um, you know it'll get really late. Okay. And... Yeah, yeah. All right, we're gonna we're gonna go right now. Let's yeah, continue. So just do some editing. I have free vinyl down here, and the girl goes right <laughs> down. Ding. <laughs> That's definitely cool. All right, that is cool. Exactly. And ballers, this is insane, but yes. I can't even believe it. In a drive through world, vinyl is a sit-down meal. Hmm. <laughs> I kind of liked that sentiment. but Yeah, no, it's cool. It is cool. I agree. I can't believe we're not live. But in any case, ballers, let's call... That was our last, that was our last one. Jeremy, thanks for coming on and talking about Record Store Day. It's fine. You didn't have my favorite, my favorite vinyl meme, though. What was that? You know the one where it says Jimmy Page? And it says, you may be cool, but you'll never be as cool as Jimmy Page digging for vinyl. Oh, yes. I did that's see that. Cool. Cool. All right. On that note, have a great record store day, man, and I'll see you soon. Peace out. All right. Thanks, Dennis.